Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and today's video is going to be about how to make a jig to hold a Christmas ball ornament. And I'm not taking credit for this because somebody posted this uh, way to hold it, and it's, it's, it's a genius way. Uh, I've always done it another way, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, he used a piece of PVC, uh, and I'm not uh, faulting him, but you'd have to get the PVC to be the right size of your glass ball. So if you cut out a MVF, you can make your own the right size of your ball. Uh, each ring has not been glued together. I did not, I can't, I didn't count the ring. There's probably 18 or 19 rings. So I cut them all out of an MVF exactly the same. There's two indexing dials that hold them together and parallel and I made my indexing dial hole so tight that I didn't have to glue it together. And, and the good thing about it, I could change it, you know, during the process. If something happened or, you know, I messed up, I could take them apart and change it. But anyway, it's got two slots cut in it, which the piece of plywood that has a hook on it is tied to a rubber band. And it goes in and out of these slots. And the good way about doing this, you can take these last two pieces of MDF off and replace your rubber band or adjust your rubber band. I actually have multiple holes so you can make it a little bit tighter. You don't want it too tight or actually pull it out of the the um, the glass or the holder out of the glass. I've always done it like this before and then this is a great jig but if you're not a woodworker this could be a little bit more difficult because I had to turn the dial and this jig is going to be better because of the fact that on the inside of these glass, sometimes I guess they're blown with a machine and there's little edges of glass that your dowel doesn't fit down into. Well, anyway, there's a magnet glued on the very end of my dowel and then a magnet on the outside. So it holds it and it holds it really good and it works really good. But I've, I've gone through some of these I couldn't get on the couldn't get on the dowel. Where well, this is going to work on every one of them. You don't even have to take them apart. So we're going to step over here to the drawing page on Corel Draw. And this is what I came up with. Uh, this is your MDF rings and this is your eighth inch plywood. And I'm, I'm not going to share the file with anybody or put it on Facebook because it really do, wouldn't do you any good. Uh, anybody could draw this and because your indexing dowels you know, every, I don't care if you go buy a quarter inch dowel from Woodcraft and then go buy a quarter inch dowel from Hobby Lobby, they're not going to be exactly the same. So you need to make them, you need to make them for your, your jig. Like I had quarter inch dowels and I made these point two four five, and they were really, really tight. And I liked it tight, but they were almost too tight. I had to hammer them through the holes. But anyway, so we're just going to, this would be any easy to draw. Anybody could draw this. But to draw this, this is relatively simple if you draw everything in the center of the page. So we're going to group all this back together and put it in the center of the page. Well, I guess I didn't group it all. Control G, put it in the center of the page. And then we're going to go down and look at it. And we're going to move it out of the way. Okay, my ball was 3.25 round. So just make a circle. That's 3.25. 3.25. Hit it, hit P in the keyboard, put it at the center of the page. Make a duplicate of that circle. Control D. And then regardless, whatever size you want, just make it a little smaller. That's probably a little bit too thin. Because the more weight you have here, the more MDF, the heavier it's going to be so it won't spin on your wheels. So then you've got two circles here. This is going to be your, your inside hollow part. So then you need to take a, a piece of wood and make it, uh, the plywood was like 0.13, so I'm going to go point, point 0.14. And then I'm going to put P on the keyboard, put it in the center of the page. It's not quite long enough. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer because you don't want this extremely long because of the fact that 
you don't want the edges rubbing. So let's zoom in here a little bit. Now there's a way to weld this, but it's it's really easier to do it this way. And now you have your slots. Now I would take a, and this is what's pretty important and why I draw in the center of the page. We're going to take our circle that's 0.25, and this is where you'd have to play with it to get it to yours. And we're going to put it in the center of the page. This is what's important. If you're going to use these for indexing dials, you need to put it in the center, and I'm going to show you why. We're going to put our nudge factor on 0.5, and we'll just see. One, two, three. That's a little bit much. Let's go with um, 0.4 of an inch, and we're just testing. That's a little bit much too. Let's go with 0.3. Make sure you grab your little hole. That's really a bit much. Tell you what, we're going to go to put it back in the center. Let's go to 0.25. Let's move it a quarter of an inch at a time. Let's see if that works. Oh, it's not going to work. Anyway, let's go with, I feel not very smart right now. Let's put it back in the center of the page and let's go up 0.2. That's good. So get it back to the center of the page, make a duplicate of that and go one, One, two, I think, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get your other copy and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the reason you want to do that is because after you take these out of the lasers, the laser, it's going to fit regardless of what side you put because your holes are in the center of the page. If you didn't do that, and had them offset just a little bit, they're not going to fit together either way. I don't know if that really makes sense, but you need to stack them up like they came out of the laser. But if you do it this way where the holes are exactly where the other hole is, you could actually flip them around. It doesn't really matter because everything is equal and that's why I draw in the center of the page. I'm not going to go through the step of drawing this. Uh, that's just a box and you're just going to want it you know, just a little bit shy. So what I would do is just take your rectangle tool and get it about like that. So now you need to make your plywood point uh, two three or point two three eight wide. And as you can see on my piece of plywood up here, I am point four three because I'm a little bit different on my drawing. But just make a hook. This isn't really necessary. The only thing that's probably really important that this needs to stick well inside of your uh, device so it won't interfere with your ro ro rotary device. It won't catch on anything. So when the string is pulled, when the rubber band is pulled back, it won't catch on your rotary device and your, your uh, dowels are actually flush. So here's those dials that I've tapped in all the way through here and then left them long, put my rubber bands around them. Anyway, stay tuned for the other video about how it actually looks on the rotary device in a little more detail. Hope that helped a little bit and thank you for watching.